Welcome to the EndNote uh, tutorial for Bakke Graduate University students. I'm uh, starting in the paper template. Uh, there's another tutorial that talks about the paper template as a whole, but this time we're just going to deal with the issue of EndNote. EndNote is a program that is offered to BGU students. Um, you either can get a copy of it through uh, contacting BGU or it will be on a flash drive that you will receive when you are in a class. So using EndNote will allow you to insert footnoted material in the footnote of each, uh, each page of your document or, and it also will insert that book into your bibliography. So let's pretend that you have just read your first book and you're ready to write your first book report. So you're going to change the title to the title of your book. So let's use Ray Bakke's book, Theology as Big as the City. And what we're going to do is, in his book, and right here, what you're going to do is insert Theology as Big as the City, comma, and then you're going to insert a footnote referencing this book. And so what you're probably going to say is, in this book, Dr. Ray Bakke speaks about, and then you'll go on. But let's insert right here, and let's not have it italicized, a footnote. So you go to References, and in References you'll see that it says Insert Footnote click on that and it brings you down to the bottom of the page. You see that? Now, the next thing you're going to do is to go into foot end, end notes. So I'm clicking on the end note program up here and then I'm going to say go to end note. Now the first time you install end note, it'll bring up, uh, let's just close out of this library so I can show you what you're going to you're going to see when you first get into it, you're going to just see a blank screen like this. And the first time you do it, you're going to have to create a library for yourself. So if you click on File, it asks you, do you want to create a new one or you want to open an existing library? As you can see, I have my EndNote library here, Judy's EndNote library. But for you, let's create a new library. Click on New. And what you're going to do is you're going to call this whatever you would like. So um, we'll pretend we're Sally Sample again. So Sally Sample dash library. Okay? So now what it does is it for the first time it brings up this screen. Now you can do this to, to make it larger. You can even go like this and make it even larger still so it takes up your whole page. There are going to be a certain number of things that you're going to have to do when you very first go into EndNote. So the first thing you need to do is you need to edit your style. So you click on Edit. You kind of come down here to Output Styles and then you're going to go to Open Style Manager. Now mine's already defaulted to Turabian Bibliography but what you're going to have to do is over here it says Unmark All. So you want to unmark all the checks because there are some that are defaulted in here. And then you're going to find the Turabian Bibliography and check that. And then you're going to say File, Close Style Manager. Okay? So you've clicked on Turabian Bibliography. Now you're closing your Style Manager. And then you're going to go and find the book. So the very first book we're going to find, we're going to go to the Library of Congress. Now the Library of Congress, you have to be online to do this. See how it said connecting to host? We're going to find Ray Bakke's book. So down here is our search area. Author, we're going to put Bakke and title, Theology as Big. That's all you need to do. Not, not a whole lot needs to be typed. And then we're going to search you'll see that it says I've retrieved one through one. So there's only one record, so I say OK. And 
there's Ray's book. Now the second thing you're going to need to do when you open a new book from the Library of Congress, double click on it. Now what you've done is you've brought up the reference, right? There are a few things you're going to have to change because EndNote does not default to the correct formatting for this the state for the publisher. In Turabian, they only want you to put the two letters of the state. So for Illinois, it's IL. So we're changing that. And then if there's any, uh, a lot of times the title of a book will have a colon. And it'll say, colon, study of, yada yada, something. Well, in the Library of Congress, when you first open this up, there's usually a space before that colon and you want to remove that space. Okay, so that's one of the things that you're going to do every time you open up a new book from the uh, Library of Congress. But we didn't have that, so then we say File, Close Reference. And it'll the first time you do it, it'll say, do you want to save this? You say yes and answer that. Don't ask me that question again. So that's one of the things that comes up. Okay, so we've identified our book. And now we're going to insert it into that footnote. Remember, we have to have our cursor in the footnote before we go into EndNote to insert this book. So we're going to see this little thing? It says Insert Citation. So we're going to click that, and it brings up this footnote. Now, as you'll notice, it's formatted incorrectly. The way that it needs to be formatted is Turabian. The second thing you need to change is to make sure that this style says Turabian Bibliography. Okay? The second thing you're going to do is down click on this bibliography. See where um, we're in the EndNote tab and in Bibliography we're going to do this down arrow. Now here's where you're going to format what you need to do with your style. Okay? So, the, this format this document, temporary delimiters. Layout, you go to layout. You notice that it doesn't say um, the text. So you want the text to be uh, Times New Roman, size 12. Go to instant formatting, and you want to turn on instant formatting. Okay, settings, you don't really need to do anything with that. Let's say okay and see what happens. Aha! You see what it did? It brought in the correct formatting for Turabian for our footnote. Okay? The other thing that this do does is it automatically puts that citation, let's scan all the way to the bottom, into the bibliography, and there's Ray Bakke's bibliography information. Now the first time you go into your paper template, delete this. It's just a note to you from me saying when you use EndNote, this will be automatically generated. So we can delete this, and now you'll notice it's got an extra space in here, so we need to change that. And hopefully I can remember how to do that. So in Layout, you see where it says line spacing single, space after double? Change that to single and say OK. And let's see if it goes right. Yes. OK? So those are the two things that you need to do when you're in the document. Now you notice how this Resurrection of the Chinese Church, it still says this Wheaton IL instead of the correct formatting. We can easily change that. I'll watch. If I go back into EndNote, Oh, I'm in the wrong uh, library. Okay, well, we'll add some more books and let you understand how to do that. So let's bring that Lambert book in. So again, we're going to search L-A-M-B-E-R-T. I forget what the name of that book was. Resurrection of the Chinese Church. Resurrection of the Chinese. Oops, I forget if I spelled correct. I'm searching again. The Library of Congress again has found one of one. And I'll say OK. And there it's
brings up the church, the resurrection of the Chinese church. Double click on that again and go back in and change that formatting to the single two digits. I'm going to say File, Close Reference, and there it is again. Now, you'll notice that now in all references we've got both of the books, right? As you add books, you are going to maybe want to separate these out into categories. So this uh, EndNote program gives you the option of creating groups. So click, double click on click on my groups, go to groups, and you want to create a group. Now this group we're going to call, let's call it OV2 China, because you're going to the China class and you want to save your books into that group. Let's go back into groups, and I'm going to add another group, create a group. This group I'm going to call OV1 Seattle. So. Now you have two classes, right? Your Sat cl Seattle class and your China class. So if we go up into this one, we know this Resurrection of the Chinese Church goes into the China class. So watch how I highlight it and then drop it into the China class. And the Ray Baki book goes into your Overture 1 class, so you drop it there. You notice that the books are still in your library. This is your main library. But in this class, we have the Theology as Big as the City, and in the China one, we have the Lambert book. That just helps you to keep when you, this could become very unwieldy and difficult to, to sort through. This makes it easier for you. Don't have to do that, it's just a little added perk. Okay, so let's go back into our document, back into our footnoting. Now. Again, we want to make sure that that footnote is not italicized. But your book titles are always italicized. And there's your, your reference. Now, the next time you reference this book, let's say this next time, I'm just going to type and type and type, and I'm going to put in a new footnote. I go back to References insert the footnote, and I'm going to use the Ray Bakke book again, but I have to go back into EndNote, highlight the Bakke book, hit Insert Citation, and this time I need to put what the page number is. So I do, it, it automatically defaults to IBID, comma, space, and then a page number, and then a period. This is the format for creating a footnote uh, for the second time that a book is referenced if it immediately follows it. Let's say in this second book we're going to do that Resurrection of the Chinese Church and we're going to reference that book. So Resurrection of the Chinese Church Remember, we're going to italicize that because the title of a book is always italicized. And in this three, this third footnote down here, it says insert book information. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to go back into my EndNote program, highlight the Lambert book, and insert. Okay? Now there comes my Tony Lambert, Resurrection of the Chinese Church information. But let's say this isn't the book report. I'm just going to do this so that you can see. We're typing along and then we want to reference the Ray Bakke book again. So I've just quoted Ray Bakke here. Let's put a little quote mark. And you're, you're going to notice that your footnote goes after the quote but no space. Go back into reference. Insert footnote. And this time we're going to go back into EndNote, go into the Theology as Big as the City, and I'm going to insert the citation. And you'll notice it says Baki, period. What you're going to do is say, comma, and we'll, re we'll delete that period in a minute after I show you. Again, we're going to reference page 24 and put a period. Now when you're doing 
a referencing of a page number. You don't write PG or P or anything. It's just the number. Just the number. Okay? Now let's say you have finished your book, uh, book reports, you finished your project, all that, and you come down here and you check to make sure that your bibliography has all of your books in it. Then what you're going to do is you want to turn back off that automatic footnoting because you need to make some changes and I'll show you what you need to do. In the bibliography, remember you're in here, instant formatting, you want to turn it off. Okay? You say okay. And you notice it stays, everything stays there that you've put in. But what we need to do is wherever you have put a footnote where you had a page number. Unfortunately, EndNote will not allow you to remove or change, make changes to the text while you're in instant formatting because it'll automatically instantly go back to the way that it was. So you need to remove the period that comes after Baki and then you have the comma and then the 24 and the period. But you can't do that when you are in instant formatting. So everything where you have uh, had a quote, so let's just pretend that we had a quote, a, a, a format of a, uh, oh, we'll just put one. I, I wonder if I can still put in something from EndNote without it going back into instant formatting. See how it went back to that old way it was formatting? So you can't do that. After You have to wait until you're completely finished with your, your document before you turn off the instant formatting. And so let's see what happens if I, remember how I took out the period after Baki and so that I could just have a comma and then a space and the number? If I turn back on instant formatting, let's see what happens to that box. Yep. See how it added that period back in that I took out? So that's why you have to turn it off when you're completely finished with your paper and remove the little periods there um, before the comma and the page number. So everywhere you've added a page number, you'll need to, to do that. So that is the pro process for doing EndNote and uh, automatically formatting your bibliography. It's a very handy program and um, I'm sure you'll enjoy it as you get to know it a little bit better.